Welcome, everyone, to episode 20 of Katie's Corner, presented by Godzilla Media. I'm Brian Katie, your host, each and every week, breaking down everything and anything involving the three regional Major League Baseball teams in our area of upstate New York. Of course, that would be the Red Sox, the Mets, and the Yankees. Before we get started, I want to remind you, though, about our friends over at Mohawk Honda. I've been talking about them for months and months on end. The entirety of at least the existence of Katie's Corner since back in late March that Mohawk Honda is that their team can find what you're looking for by not just searching their lot. They'll search all of upstate New York, across the entire state. Hell, they'll search up and down the eastern seaboard if they need to, just to make sure they get you into a vehicle that fits you 100% all the way, not just partially, the entire way. But the real opportunity right now is not just for people looking to buy cars. It's really for people looking to sell cars or trade them in. That's right. Mohawk Honda buys cars, and in some cases, you may be able to sell it for more than you originally paid for it. That's because the supply chain chain is still facing challenges going all the way back to during the COVID lockdown a few years ago. Obviously, things have loosened up now, but still, the car industry is a little bit behind on catching up, which creates a perfect selling opportunity for you, which, again, I have been saving for months on end, going back to when they were doing the Kelly Blue Book instant cash offers at Mohawk Honda. And as always, the team at Mohawk Honda, they make sure the buying and selling experience is very easy for you and all your friends and family involved in the car buying experience, nice and easy. Whether it be a talk to Cars for Currents for Boda, Luisa VIP Man Morales, or if you go right to the man in charge, General Manager Greg Johnson, no matter who you talk to on that staff, they will make sure to make the buying and selling process as easy and hassle-free as absolutely possible. So go to the friends at Mohawk Honda on Freeman's Bridge Road in Scotia, where they want to buy your car and maybe turn around and put you into a newer certified pre-owned used vehicle that fits your budget, your lifestyle. Because of Mohawk Honda, they always go out of their way to please you. That being said, let's jump right in to the playoff standings as they look right now. Now, I'm recording this as of about a quarter after 11 Wednesday evening, August 24th. So we don't have all of the results in from the games on Wednesday evening. The only, But the only game going on right now is Dodgers Brewers, which really only has an effect right now on the NL Central and wild card race. So it's not a huge deal that we're recording at this time because we all know what the Dodgers are doing. They are wrecking shop and owning the NL West and just so just for note, the Dodgers are winning 10-2, to two, top of the sixes. We're recording this right now. So, again, we're just going to go with the assumed result there and move from there. But you look at these standings right now in Major League Baseball, starting with the National League in the, their divisions. And obviously, we'll, we'll dive in depth to the three regional teams in just a moment. Uh, Mets sitting a game and a half ahead of the Braves, who won today in blowout fashion over the Pirates. Nine and a half clear of Philly, who's in third place. And then Miami and Washington, they're done for. Nobody cares about them. And the Central, Cardinals, 71 and 53, five clear of the Brewers. Going to be six once this, excuse me, going to be five and a half once this game goes final in LA. And then Chicago, 17 back, Cincy and Pittsburgh, not an essential in the argument. Dodgers, 85 and 37. They're going to make that 86 and 37 once tonight's game goes official. That'll put them 19 and a half clear of the Padres, 25 clear of the Giants. And nobody really cares about the Diamondbacks or the Rockies in that case. In the wild card, Braves, 10 clear of the three spot. Because remember, there's three wild cards this year, which is something I need to constantly remind myself as I'm getting ready for the show. Three wild cards this year with the three division winners. The Braves are 10 clear of the Padres, who are the third wild card. The Phillies are two ahead of the Padres in the second wild card. And then, as I mentioned, the Padres third. The Brewers are just a game. They'll be a game and a half, though, after tonight behind the Padres. The Giants five and a half. And then Arizona 10 back. And then after that, you know, honestly, I'd say from Arizona down, you don't need to worry about. Uh, and even the Giants, really. I mean, the Giants, they just, I, don't, I just don't see the Padres or Brewers falling behind the Giants at any point as things are going right now. But crazy things have happened. You never know. You know, like uh, the Cardinals a few years ago, they were what, like 10 back going into the month of September and then caught wildfire 
and won the what was it? it was either the essential or the wild card. It was it was nuts. I don't remember the exact story, but anyways, uh, now let's shift to the American League. Yankees on top like they have been pretty much the entire season, seventy six and forty eight. They're seven and a half clear of Tampa Bay, eight of Toronto, eleven and a half of Baltimore, and then sixteen ahead of the last place Red Sox, the only team in the AL East, by the way, under five hundred in the Central. Cleveland, four clear of the Twins and White Sox. And then the Royals and Tigers, we can just call eliminated. And then the West, the Astros, three and a half ahead of New York for the best record in the American League. Twelve and a half clear of the Mariners for the division. And then the Rangers, Angels, Athletics in that order to round out the West. By the way, the Dodgers, they are seven, uh, six and a half clear. Oh, no. Excuse me. Nine. They're going to be seven. So they are eight clear of the Mets, nine in the loss column for the best record in the National League. Um, not to diminish what the Mets are doing right now, but I'm just saying that that's just how damn good the Dodgers have been. I mean, when, you've, when you've lost, you're essentially at a point where they've only lost 30% of their games this year. And we're about to hit September next week. That's just that's just so damn nutty. I can't even explain it. Uh, the AL wildcard picture. Your three wildcard teams as of tonight would be Tampa Bay, Toronto, and Seattle. Tampa Bay just a half game ahead of Toronto for the one spot. Toronto a game ahead of Seattle in between the two and three spots. And then after Seattle, we have Baltimore two and a half out. The Twins and White Sox four out. And then Boston at seven back in the wild card. So that's how the standings break down. So let's just jump right into it. Boston Red Sox. Um, loses the five of their last six, including two out of three each in Baltimore and at home this uh, – and loses the first two at home this week against Toronto. They'll wrap up that series tonight. Uh, well, I said I was recording Wednesday night, so we'll say tomorrow night, but it'll be – It'll be tonight by the time you, you hear this for the first time on Thursday uh, against Toronto. Then it'll be three at home against the Rays this weekend, followed by three at Minnesota before coming back home right away for a four-game set Labor Day weekend against the Texas Rangers. Um, I mean, I can't call Tampa Bay a pushover just because of how good Tampa's been performing as of late and the fact they put themselves into the first wild card spot right now. So this is not a good time for the, the Red Sox to suddenly lose five out of six, including your last game at Pittsburgh last Thursday, then two out of three in Baltimore. Now your first two against Toronto this week after having Monday off. And I, I, need, I just need to officially say something. Can we just can we just be officially done with Winkowski as a starting pitcher after this season? Like, what is this kid like? Back to back blowout losses has looked atrocious in both of them. The Red Sox are twelve and eighteen since the All Star break. Eight and nine they were they were eight and nineteen in July and nine and eleven so far in August. After a twenty and six June, this team was projecting up, and then it's like they just hit the All Star break and forgot how to play baseball. It, it's it's maddening. And the same thing really happened for a little while there with the Yankees, too. So, I, I like, this isn't me as a Yankee fan quoting. It's just it's just facts. This, this Boston team just decided to stop. I remember how baseball This Winkowski kid that I was mentioning, you know, 24 years old, but he's, he's going out there with almost a 6 ERA. Now, I know they don't have a whole lot of options with Eovaldi on the IL right now and Tanner Houck's in the IL, so you're kind of – you're kind of limited in the closer spot as well, but don't you think? Wouldn't you think at some point you consider putting Whitlock in the full time rotation and just putting Winkowski in as a long reliever? Like, like th that's just where I'm at. Because you look at Whitlock, at least he's got a, a three and two record with a three ERA this year. Whereas Winkowski keeps throwing him out there, he's five and seven with a five eighty three ERA, a WHIP that's screaming at one five six. Whitlock's WHIP is below one. Like, you've had Whitlock already start nine games at this point this year. Why not flip-flop the two? If you really want to give yourself a legitimate shot, don't you think, if you're the manager, don't you take Winkowski and say, hey, listen, this doesn't seem to be working out. Let's throw you in the in the bullpen as the long reliever, and we're going to put Whitlock in your spot. Like, I don't think Alex Cora, if he had half a brain, would do that to give him his team a fighting chance at least. I get that. You know, Hosmer's on the IL now. That Trevor Story is still on the 10-day IL. 
But it's not really the offense that's the problem. It's your pitching. It's your goddamn pitching. Give yourself a chance while you can. Give yourself some kind of chance. And Alex Cora doesn't seem to want to be doing that because he keeps putting freaking Wisco- Josh Winkowski out there. You're not going to have a team with a winning mentality if you keep sacrificing at least one of your games every five days. Be a man, suck it up, make the hard change. Tell Josh, listen, I get it. You're supposed to be part of our future, but right now you're not doing it for us. You look at every metric there is out there about pitching. Garrett Whitlock is above Josh Winkowski in everything. Everything! And Core is still sacrificing every fifth day by putting Winkowski out there instead of Whitlock and keeping Whitlock in the bullpen. That's not going to work. I don't care if Tanner Houck's injured right now. That's not going to work. Barnes is going to have to pick it up. Strom's going to have to pick it up. Davis is going to have to pick it up. Schreiber's going to have to pick up the pieces. Sawamura. Have them pick up the pieces with Houck on the IL right now. You want to put yourself in any kind of contention for the wild card, let alone the division, which is, you can pretty much say goodbye to at this point. I'm sorry, but you're not making up 16 games in 30, in 35, 40 days. Not the way you're playing baseball. And not the way the team, the Yankees, are starting to play baseball again. It's not happening. So if you want to give yourself even a fighter's chance, Alex Cora's got to do something here. Instead of just sitting on his goddamn hands, putting out the same lineup, it seems like, every single day, and putting out the same pitches every single week, like there's nothing to fight for. Alex Cora has clearly given up on this team, even when they still have a mathematical fighting chance. And if I'm a Red Sox fan, I am ticked off right now about that. I am ticked the hell off. And I'm shocked there's not... I'm not hearing any whispers about Alex Cora being fired at this point. I mean, look at this squad that they had. Now, yes, I know they had injuries at certain points of the year, and Chris Hill only made two starts for the entire year because of three injuries that added up to a lost season. And yes, Eovaldi's been on the I.O. I believe this is twice now. But look at your lineup. Look at your lineup. There's no reason... With a lineup that includes Christian Vasquez, J.D. Martinez, Alex Verdugo, Rafael Devers, Xander Bogarts. There's no reason this team shouldn't be in the mix for the wild card and even the division. But no, instead, you're a fledgling franchise right now. Christian Arroyo. Like, this is a disgrace. Even Tommy Pham is batting 270 since coming to the team at the trade deadline. This is horrendous. Like, there's no excuse for this squad to be in the position they're in. And the only thing I can think of is that Alex Cora gave up on his team. That's it. You can cast blame to Trevor Story being hurt during the season. You can cast blame to Chris Sale making two starts. You can cast blame to injuries, this, that, and the other thing. But when it comes right down to it, when it comes down to X's and O's, Alex Cora, your manager, Red Sox fans, your manager, gave up on your team. There's no other way to it. There's no feasible explanation except for that. Your head guy, your captain, gave up. He waved the white flag before your team was ready to surrender, and now your team is suffering the consequences. Pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. And because of that, it's almost time to turn off the lights. It's almost time to break out Don Meredith over here. Turn out the lights. The party's over. Like, I'm ready to hit play on that any day now. This team is awful. It's pathetic. As because of the poor leadership they have at the helm. It's because of Alex Cora. You can quote me on that all day and all night if you want. Quote me all you want on that. Alex Cora is the problem. Because in the end, you can't just blame injuries. Everybody's got injuries at some point. The Mets have gone through injuries. The Yankees are still fighting through injuries. You can't just blame injuries the whole time. And Alex Cora is the guy you put the blame on. 
Um, before we get into the New York teams, the Mets and Yankees, got to tell you about our friends over at Johnstone Supply in Troy. Yes, the summer is winding down. The official start to fall is about a month away. Back to school is in high gear over the next few weeks with college students already moving back in across the capital region. But we're also going to be hitting the 80s and 90s all over again this weekend and beyond, which means if your AC system is still not functioning properly, what in God's name are you doing and waiting? Get it done and checked out right now by Johnstone Supply in Troy. Ask them about their high efficiency central AC systems and Douglas mini splits. Go and ask them about Goodman, Fujitsu, Westinghouse, all great brands, all at great prices, and all in stock for you to get. And also, might as well mention this now since I'm mentioning fall coming up officially starting in less than a month. That means the colder weather is not too far out either. There's already people like the there's already people like meteorologists and the farmers almanac trying to predict that this is gonna be one of the worst winters in Albany history. Yeah, yeah, whatever. We'll see about that. But if that's the case, you want to make sure you're ready for the winter as well. You're ready for those colder temperatures. So while you're getting the AC fixed, why not have the guys also look at your heating system and make sure that's at 100% ready to go come the colder temperatures. Just saying, kill two birds with one stone. Bang! Right there at Johnstone Supply in Troy. Stop in and find out the great service and products. Talk to Kev, James Bird, anybody over there. Give them a call so you can have a cooler place for the summer and possibly a warmer place in the fall and winter. 518-272-5922 or visit them at 2600 6th Avenue in Troy. Get a new AC system today. Get your heating system checked before it does get too late for the fall and winter. 518-272-5922, 2600 6th Avenue in Troy or visit them online, johnstonesupply.com. As far as the Mets are concerned, you heard me read those standings and I read them correctly. The Braves are only a game and a half back of the Mets heading into this weekend. Yes, you heard me right. The Braves are a game and a half back, which means, yes, I know the Mets took they took care of business with the Braves over the weekend. Yes, I know they did. I, I'm fully aware. I am fully aware the Mets just got off of maintaining an arm's length away from the Braves. I'm well aware of that. They were able to escape with a win out of four and then turn around and take three out of four from Philly. But this Braves team is not letting down. So every time you lose, you might as well call the win for the Braves because the Braves are on fire right now. Now I just lost two in Yankee stadium to the Yankees. You have a saving grace kind of, and then you have a, and not so saving grace. The saving grace is you have 10 games coming up at city field starting today. And seven of them are against Colorado and Washington. The not-so-saving grace is that the three games you play in between those two series are against the Los Angeles Dodgers, the best team in baseball, who also can't seem to lose right now. Now, here's the other thing of good news I can say about your Mets schedule, by the way. You don't see the Braves again until the first weekend of October. Don't see him again until Friday the 30th of September through Sunday, October 2nd, which is your second to last series of the season. So by then, there is potential for you to have grown some space between you and Atlanta where you could potentially be clinching or have already clinched division by then. But if you're going to do that, you need to put in the work and beat the teams you're supposed to beat. I'm not going to sit here and lecture you about how important the Dodgers series is going to be next Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. That goes unsaid. What really needs to be said is the importance of taking care of Colorado for four games today through Sunday and then taking care of the Nationals Friday through Sunday next weekend on Labor Day weekend. And then beyond that, you have to go take care of – let me see here. you got to go take care of Pittsburgh for three and go to Miami and take care of those three. I mean, think about how – think about how cush this schedule is, Okay. After the three games set against the Dodgers next Tuesday through Thursday, this is the Mets' schedule. Three against the Nationals, three at Pittsburgh, three at Miami, with a day off in between those two series, uh, three at home against the Cubs, four at home against the Pirates. If you're not on the brink of clinching the division by the end of that Pirates series on September 18th, then something is freaking wrong. Something is wrong. Plain and simple. Like, uh, like, there's no other way to break it down. 
you better be ready to clinch the division around that time. Because let me give you the Braves schedule real quick. Let me see if it's any easier or as easy. By the way, the Braves are uh, 15 and 7 in the month of August, just a heads up. Which includes, I remember correctly, what, like, some stupid, like, winners of, like, 14 to last 16? Let's see, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 11, 12, 3. Yeah, they've, they won 14 to last 16, including today's blowout win over the Pirates. Here's here's the schedule. Here's the schedule for Atlanta. It's somewhat easy, but not as easy as the Mets. They host the, they go to St. Louis for three this weekend. Not that easy. Cardinals are a division leader and sufficient at the game of baseball and have some pretty good pitching to contend with. Then they host the Rockies for three next Tuesday through Thursday while the Mets are playing the Dodgers. Obviously, advantage Braves there. Then the Braves play three Labor Day weekend against Miami. Then a day off, two games in Oakland, another day off, three games in Seattle, three in San Francisco, and three at, back home against Philly. To me, the, the important thing is going to be what the Mets do during that eight-game stretch that Atlanta is on the West Coast. If the Mets can provide some kind of separation between themselves and the Mets while the Braves play eight straight on the West Coast over a week and a half span, then we're in business. But as of right now, the Mets are walking around with eyes in the back of their heads, and rightfully so, because the Braves are a dangerous squad that somehow is making things work with guys getting arrested and guys getting hurt. And I have no other nice way of saying that. They, they, they're just, they're, just, they're just making it happen. I have no other way of explaining that to you. Um, take a look at Eduardo Escobar, his injury update, if there is one. Um, right now, he is trending for a return on Friday, just so you know. So look, they're talking about Eduardo Escobar returning Friday. Uh, Jeff McNeil is already back, if I remember correctly. Uh, yeah, so Escobar, they're looking at returning this weekend. Uh, Luis Guillorme, I have not heard anything. I believe he's still going to be out for a few more weeks, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, they're looking at hopefully back for the postseason, essentially, for the Mets. So, you know, Guillorme's still out. Escobar, they're getting back this weekend. Um, let's see. They still have Walker, you still have Scherzer, you still have DeGrom, you still have Bassett. Carlos Carrasco, I do believe you're looking at another one to two weeks for him. Just double check it. Uh, yes, yeah, so you're looking at another couple weeks with the left oblique, 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 left oblique strain. Say that three times fast. Uh, for him, obviously, McGill is out for the year. And uh, you're missing Drew Smith right now. But all in all, yes, you're fighting through a couple of injuries, but they're not injuries you can't get through. Because uh, Trevor Williams has been much improved since April and May. You know, he, he's doing really well out there. Um, so you just got just to gotta manage through a little bit of the struggles there. Just get through it. Get through it, get through it, get through it. Um, but all in all, you, know, you, you, you have four of your five starters. You have four of the five starters you knew you were working with once McGill went down. And then obviously Pearson's going to come up once you get to September and you get expanded rosters. So that only provides you more flexibility while Carrasco's still out once the rounders, rosters expand. I believe it's next f Thursday, Friday, um, whatever September 1st is. I think it's next Thursday. Um, so yeah, that, that's where you're at. That is where you're at, and the Mets just have to keep eyes in the back of their head. Finally, we get to the New York Yankees. Remember what I said last week, episode 19, I said that maybe – the struggles were a good thing for them. Does anybody want to uh, come and support me on that now? Anybody? Bueller? Bueller? Yes, I know they're only eight ahead of the Rays, eight and a half ahead of the of the Blue Jays. But does anybody want to now say that I was correct a little bit? All right. Just you know, just saying. Ben and Tendy started to wake up and produce. 
Yes, they lost their first three to Toronto, but since then have turned around and won three in a row, including two of the Mets, sweeping the shortened two-game series, Subway Series. Now they go to the West Coast and get to play seven games against two of the worst teams in baseball, Oakland for four, the Angels for three, before they come to Tampa Bay for the weekend, for Labor Day weekend, excuse me. So you mean to tell me the Yankees might have just found their groove again they're getting Stanton back at some point, probably in the next week. And they get a cushy schedule for the next eight days. Th- that's what you're telling me. Sweet. I'm all for it. Like, what, what more could you ask for at this point? You can't ask for much more. Stanton is supposed to... Uh, he went through workouts Monday and Tuesday in the Bronx. And he's actually going to be activated, it looks like, for the first game in Oakland. Thursday night. So there you go. He rehabbed over the weekend at Somerset. And they're looking at him rejoining the Yankees for a Thursday return. Does much more need to be said there? I think not. So now you're getting Stanton back, which basically puts your lineup at hole. Uh, is Trevino, Rizzo, Torres, IKF, Donaldson. That's your infield. You still have Judge. You still have Hicks. You still have LeMahieu, and now and you have Benintendi. And now you're getting, now you're getting uh, Stanton back. So now, with uh, without even including Aaron Hicks, let me just see here: five, six, seven, eight, nine. So including Hicks, you now have ten guys to rotate within eight positions. On the field. So now that provides you a better opportunity to rotate days off and keep guys healthy. And oh yeah, don't forget we have Oswaldo Cabrera still on the roster. My assumption... My assumption is Cabrera either gets sent down for Stanton or they send down Marwin Gonzalez. I'm not exactly sure. Because I don't know how many options Gonzalez even has at this point. Because Florial got sent back down after uh, it was after Hicks came back or something. Um, they look at the pitching. Cole Tyone, Cortez, Herman, and Montas. Uh, Frankie had a productive start against the Mets. Tyonis kind of struggled a little bit recently, but Cortez pitching well. Cole, he is, for a supposed ace, Garrett Cole, he's really Jekyll and Hyde, isn't he? Like, he can be great for like two months and then just have a couple of starts in a row where you're just like, who the hell is this guy? Um, But if I'm going to say there's one guy that, that, I struggle to support at this point going forward as we approach the postseason. It's Domingo Herman. Now I say I know you cut down your rotation from five guys to three or four, and Herman is not even close to being in the picture for that. Because you know it's going to be Cole, Cortez, Montas. If they go four, they throw in Tyone. They're not going to go with Herman. Okay? They'll put Herman in the bullpen as a long reliever at that point. And you just hope that Clay Holmes gets back soon. Because, yeah, Clay Holmes. Um, we should take a look at him. Uh, latest updates I have here. And don't forget, Zach Britton might come back too. So here's the latest I'm seeing about the two of them. Um, Albert Abreu did not look good Monday. Uh, let's see here. Stan, I already mentioned, come back Thursday. Albert Brave has been the 15-day IL since August 21st. Uh, no immediate word on him. Harrison Bader, no real talk about whether or not he's going to be making it to the roster. Um, but there's been hopes he'll be back around the first week of September. Uh, Britain, it looks like they want to activate him sometime in September. They just don't have a definitive... Uh, 
idea of when. Uh, Donaldson's back from his stomach virus. Zach Efros. Uh, they're looking at... I don't know what they're going to do with Efros. I don't know what they're going to do with Efros. Um, and Clay Holmes. Here we go. Uh, la, la, la. Looks like the Yankees are optimistic he'll come back right around uh, Labor Day weekend. So you're getting bodies back in the next few weeks. Starting with Stanton this weekend in Oakland. It's time to turn up the to start running on all gears again and turn things up. It's time to shift into high gear once again and just step on the throats of everyone. That includes Oakland, that includes the Angels, and then, of course, that includes Tampa come Liberty weekend, and that includes any remaining games with Boston and Toronto. Just get it done, get it over with, put them out of their misery, and set yourselves up for October baseball. That's where you're at if you're a Yankees fan right now. That's where you're at. That does it for Katie's Corner, episode 20, presented by Godzilla Media, sponsored by our friends over at Johnstone Supply and Troy, as well as Mohawk Honda in Scotia, Glenville. Yeah, if you have any comments, you can always visit me on Twitter, at Brian Katie, B-R-I-A-N-C-A-D-Y. Any long-form comments or questions that go over 140 characters, shoot me an email, brian.katie at Godzilla Media. That's G-O-Z-I-L-L-A Media. Dot com. That's it. Next week, Katie's Corner gets drunk. I'm kidding. But it becomes legal to drink. It's episode 21. Bad joke. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm a nerd. I can't help it. Anyways, enjoy your baseball. We'll see you next week to preview all the Labor Day weekend action. Enjoy your